Hello, everybody. I'm Michelangelo Badio. Hopefully you know that by now. And I'm ready to do another installment of the MAB Free Guitar Lessons. Now, I'm going to wait a, a little bit to make sure everybody's online here. Now, when I'm playing, okay, I see Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Uh, what I want to uh, talk about today is something that I have talked about many, many times in my career, but it keeps coming up. And, you know, I, I, it's funny because I'm very close to Metal Method uh, uh, owner Doug Marks. And uh, I'm going to say this at the very beginning. I like to talk, as many of you know. If you want detailed instruction, 13 different instructional programs, go to metalmethod.com. I even have a new jazz one that's blowing up online. Um, I have a great YouTube channel. We are getting tens of thousands of people joining up. So let's see, uh, there's a lot of people coming online now, great. And uh, But I wanna say this at the very beginning, okay? This program now is about helping you, but it's also about the world according to Mikey. So I get a chance to talk, I get a chance to do a lot of things. If you want detailed instruction, I mean, my, you know, the minutia, that the real details, get my Metal Method instructional programs www.metalmethod.com. I have 13 different programs. I even have a jazz program that's blowing up right now because I talked about it a couple weeks ago. Uh, they are great. They're 24 jazz progressions. I start from the letter A and move up. And I always say this, that I think of music like an alphabet, A, B, C, D, F, G. A lot of teachers don't start at A. And and then what you what you find is you as a player, if you don't start from the ground up, you develop problems when you get more involved with your instrument and older. So check out Metal Method. Now I get to talk. I get to show uh, what I'm going to teach you today, but I also get to talk about life lessons. See, a lot of what I talk about, I first of all, I live it. I don't just talk about it. I live it. Do you know why I'm still here after all these years, putting out all these records, doing all this stuff? Because it's not like, oh, do as I say, not as I do. I want to talk. No, you're not going to talk yet, Joey. I'm trying to keep him down. Joey's a rock I want to talk. Joey's a rock star now. I'm keeping him under the camera right now. He will talk later. I actually have a whole segment so Joey can air his grievances with me because he's sick of playing second fiddle. You're darn right. Okay, shut up, Joey. So anyway, but here's the point. What I do, what I say is how I live. What I teach is what I teach myself. This is why I'm playing at such a high level for decades. This is why I still have a great career because I'm not just telling you stuff. It's like, do as I say, not as I do. Do as I say and what I say I do. That's the way I work, that's the way I live. Okay, so there's a lot of people coming in here now. All right, great. Let's talk about the subject matter. Picking is a lot less complicated than people think. I have a saying. Now, I'm not saying I invented it, but I like it. Paralysis through analysis. See, here's what happens. People are like, oh, I'm trying to pick it. I'm trying to do a platform technique like Michelangelo made you, but I can't quite get it down. Okay, let's see. He moves it like 1 64th of a millimeter. I don't understand it. Ah, ah. What does that mean? You're paralyzed because you are over analyzing. Let me, I'm gonna move this camera down just a little bit. Okay, and yeah, it's actually a double guitar. I used to say, don't call it a double deck. I'm trying to read some questions here. We have a whole lot of people online already. Okay, so let me explain. Now I've explained this before, but like I, I was trying to say earlier, Doug Marks from Metal Method has a really great philosophy about this. He likes to play golf. Now, I'm, not, I'm a terrible golfer. I don't really golf too much. But every month in every magazine, they have to talk about the same things. How do you putt? 
Okay, that's a technique in golfing, you know, a close, get to the hole really close. So it's the same with guitar. So am I repeating myself? Yes. Is it necessary? Yes. Why? Because first of all, a lot of people maybe not have heard of, I mean, tens of thousands did, but it's important to reinforce. It's kind of like when you're in sports. I mean, if you're playing like, you know, uh, American football and you're throwing a football, the fundamentals are still uh, similar now than they were 10 or 20 years ago. So they still talk about them today because they talked about them before and not a lot has changed. Yes, things change, but, but certain basic human things do not change. And it's like a guitar. I mean, yes, players are faster, they're stronger, and in many ways that it's the same with guitar. Players are faster, you know, the young, the youth. My dad used to say, I have a great say, son, youth is wasted on the young. I mean, you know, I just can imagine me knowing what I know now at 20 years old. Oh, everybody wants to rule the world. I would rule the world! But so would everybody else my age that, that had a 20 year old, uh, you know, uh, could be 20 years old again. So the point is this, let's go over it. There are two. Now see, everything I do is divisible by metal. Metal one. Metal two. Everything I do is divisible by metal. There are only two basic ideas to picking. Now, I'm going to lower this just a little bit more so you can see my... my I am playing this riff on my brand new STM24. This guitar will be available in a few weeks. It is in the $250 price range. Now, what I did was this. I anchor my fingers on a guitar. Now, who else does that? John Petrucci is one that comes to mind. Ingve Malmsteen's one that comes to mind. So when you see how I play, I am left-handed. Or people said, well, how can you fit your fingers between pickups? See, I don't really think about that stuff. What I think about is, okay, I've got to anchor my fingers. Where do they feel comfortably? See, it's paralysis through analysis. I don't overanalyze this stuff. And here's what I can tell you. Angle your pick. Now I'm going to come up close. Do you see that angle coming down this way? That is the way I angle it. Now people like George Lynch or maybe Eddie Van Halen, I never really studied their picking techniques like I studied people like Robert Fripp or Aldi Miola, but they might angle it the opposite way. It's okay. What you have to realize is that you have to find one of the two disciplines of picking. Fingers on the guitar, fingers off the guitar. Watch Al DiMiola play. I, he's one of my all-time favorite guitar players. See, he plays like this. When he's playing, he's like this. So I am not, I am like this. I put my fingers on the guitar. Now, some people say, well, you might have a disadvantage. Hey, Bill, I see Bill Peck online. Bill's a really close friend. He's been on a lot of albums of mine. What I found is this, that I, I see, I'm, I'm going to put this up because it's important. I made the study for you. I have spent my entire life analyzing what we do as guitar players, because here's what I found. We have more differences than similarities. How can somebody pick up this thing called an electric guitar and sound like an Eddie Van Halen, sound like a Robert Fripp, sound like an Al Di Miola, sound like a Buckethead, sound like a Paul Gilbert, sound like a Steve Vai, sound like a John Petrucci or Michelangelo Beatty or Ingve Malmsteen. How can we sound so different 
but yet play the same instrument. See, it's not like that with a violin. It's not like that with a piano. Guitar, especially electric guitar. Look what we can do with acoustic guitars now. I mean, I'm even experimenting with this. Like, just funny stuff. I, it's really hard. You know, I mean, I'm tapping, I'm doing all this crazy stuff. I love playing acoustic. I've actually been playing more acoustic than electric lately. But let me explain my methodology, and this is why you need to get speed kills and metal method programs if you want to learn the details of what I'm talking about. The electric guitar is absolutely the most versatile and individually expressive instrument on planet Earth. There is no other instrument on, in this world that you can take a Steve Vai and play this exact guitar, and it's going to sound like Steve Vai. Or you take Eddie Van Halen playing this exact guitar, this exact setup, and he's going to sound like Eddie Van Halen. There's no other instrument on this, in this world that can do that. None. So I used to say to myself, why? Poor quiet in French. Why? I want to talk. No, not yet. Okay, so I, I, I would ask myself, why can this guitar do these things? And I started watching picking techniques. And I started analyzing what people were doing. And I realized, oh my God, there's so many differences that, that there are more differences than similarities. So what do we have in common? Like when Michelangelo Bailey goes... <laughs> Why can I do that? Why does it sound like me? I like to use the neck pickup. See, there's electronics involved, but there's something else. What I learned was this, that in spite of all the differences, we have very few similarities. And this is where the paralysis through analysis takes hold because uh, the average person, and you know, I consider myself an average person too, but I studied this for you. So you, you don't have to study this. I made the study. I, and so all you have to do is just listen. And you know, if you want to disagree, disagree. But I'm going to tell you this. I know I'm right about this. I'm not a rocket scientist. I, I'm not going to cure cancer. I'd love to. I wish I could help every person. I, you know, I can't help every dog in the world, and I'd love to. Uh, but I can tell you this, I made a study of guitar playing, and that's why my programs are so popular. I cut through the BS. I did the research, and we're talking years of research. There are only two picking techniques. You put your fingers on a guitar. You don't have to rest them like me. See, the key is it doesn't have to look like the way I play. That's not important. All you have to do is either ask yourself, do you rest your fingers on the guitar or do you want a free-floating mechanism? Al Miola, John McLaughlin, Joe Bonamassa. Now, this one guy online got into a big thing about, oh, Joe Bonamassa doesn't do that! Yes, he does. I mean, look at I'm man enough to admit I'm wrong, but he does, okay? So, and, and, and this is the thing that I don't do to you. If you ever watch my lessons, I don't criticize. I make observations. I say, look it, this is how other people do this. So that's a big difference than saying, you suck. You know how many, and, and here's what I think about my own pages, and then I'm going to play a little more. I get people coming up to me for my jazz progressions. Now here, here okay, here's the first line. Ew. And go to my YouTube page to see this. Uh, but I delete it because I think it's all stupid. I've studied jazz. Well, great. I'm happy for you. See, because they don't think that because I'm a metal, I've known as metal, that I can't play other styles. What they don't know is that those jazz progressions that I'm talking about that are online, I gave you the first few of them, 
online, but you can get the whole program through Metal Method, are based on one of, a, a fantastic jazz teacher. So when these guys, oh, I've studied jazz. See, there's this arrogance and elitist attitude that like, well, yes, I, I am in this exalted status. Like, yes, I know more than you. And uh, because it doesn't matter if you're famous or or you've traveled the world or or you have a degree in music that I know more. Even though I've done nothing musically, I'm going to tell you how the real thing is. Now, maybe it's a little arrogance on my part. It's arrogance on my part. Shut up, Joey. Back down. I'm going to let him talk later. But the point is this. These jazz progressions... Uh, uh, because I study jazz, they are fantastic for you to learn the basics, the starting point in jazz. And, and uh, so when people say, and you know what I do? The first thing I do when somebody hits me with a major criticism like that, I'll go to their page. And you know what I found out 99.99% of the time? One, they don't have any photos of themselves. Two, they have no videos to back up their talk. Talk is cheap, baby walk the walk. Talk is talk, walk the walk. I walk the walk and I'm here to help you. Now, if you play with your fingers on the guitar, you have to think only in terms of a few simple things. Fingers on the guitar. Angle your pick either downward towards the headstock or upwards towards the headstock. If you don't have a headstock, Think about the end of the neck. I like head socks, personally. I think if you clip off certain parts, it's like, it's not manly. It's not manly to cut off a head sock. It's like, I feel emasculated. What? And so I, I, I can't, I, there's no way in the world I could play with, with a head sock chopped off. I'd be like, oh, I feel so sexy, so sexy. And so, but the point is this. Fingers on, it's like, you know, the karate kid. Lex on, lex off. Fingers on, fingers off. You either have your fingers on the guitar or you have them off. I personally like them on the guitar. <laughs> Pretty fast. And every note you could hear, it works. But it also works if you don't have your fingers on the guitar. So if you get anything out of this workshop today, paralysis through analysis. When you overanalyze, you paralyze yourself into a point of, it's a daunting task. Oh my God, I don't know. Where do I start? Where do I begin? What do I do? Now I've asked myself those same questions. But here is what you do, PPS, potential picking speed. I'm lowering the camera like this. Just something simple, tremolo. When you do one note, and again, I talk about this in Speed Kills, my Starlux video, they are all available on metalmethod.com. When you talk, uh, and when I talk about this and you just play one note, look at your picking hand. Look at it and say, how am I doing this? That is your PPS. So if you do that fast, what you need to do is you need to base your picking technique around the way you play a tremolo. I've said this for decades. It's true. It works. It still works. Speed kills works. Okay, I'm trying to look into the camera. Okay, you know what it is? It's Joey's grabbing my hand. I want to talk! Shut up! Okay, anyway, I'm going to let him talk, I promise. Okay, but when you do uh, the analysis, don't be paralyzed by overanalyzing what you do. See, because, you know, I have another saying that, that People who are talented, you know, people who are talented in music find a way to make music. Uh, it's very true. You know, when people say, oh, don't play in boxes or, oh, the cage system or, oh, this is the one thing that I, I, I kind of, I'm an elitist about. Oh, yes, I play jazz. Oh, I do this. Oh, really? So that gives you this exalted opinion. Um, 
I do not comment on other people. Did you ever see one post where I comment, commented on another guitar player's teaching philosophy? Never, ever, ever. I don't do it. You know why? Because every person has a unique approach. I have an approach based on a multitude of things. One, a degree in music. Two, over three decades of experience playing live at a high level. Three, I have been signed to Warner Brothers twice, not once. Four, I had my own successful record company for over 20 years. Five, not only do I play guitar, I play piano, and I'm going to be uh, doing piano videos too. I base my methodology on centuries of thought. This is why, and this is no political statement, you do not want to erase the past. Because if you do, you will not ever learn about Mozart. You'll never learn about Beethoven. You'll never learn about Josquin Dupre, the great Brazilian uh, uh, writer. You know, One Note Samba, Girl from Ipanema. Because you will always find something wrong with what they did. Okay, you cannot judge the present by the past. And music is very much like that. I mean, should, should we be mad at uh, Charlie Parker because he was a jerk? He was literally a jerk in life. He was not a nice guy. Started fights on stage. You know, he's a heroin addict. You know, so, so should we not like his music? You know, because, but we can learn from this. And so what I'm saying is I did the study for you. And, and all you have to do is realize if you pick with your hands on a guitar or off, one, do you slant it towards the bottom of the headstock or the top? That's two. And three, play. Okay, and then watch your PPS. Watch your picking speed. One note. do this all day. Sounds like Captain America. I can do this all day! And then let's get crazy. Okay, Joey wants to show up. what you do. You just ask yourself a few simple questions. Now, one of the things that I love to do is I think the youngest generation of guitar players are probably the best guitar players I've ever seen in my life. Literally. Not figuratively, literally. I have the saying that I have told you many times, always a student. Always a student. I never think that I'm so good. Oh, Michelangelo video can do this. Michelangelo video can do that. I can do a lot of things because I work hard. It's not magic. It's practice, but it's practicing with intelligence. I don't sit around. And sometimes intelligence means watch a movie. I will watch Avengers Endgame. It's a long movie. So I'll just play exercises or just do legato things. I'll sit there watching and you know, I'll just sit there and do this forever. I'm not using it. See, Joey's getting mad. Because... Gotta do the head bop. I'm just doing it with one hand, just goofing around. I can do it because I, I'll, I'll sit and watch a movie and just do mindless exercises. But there's a reason for that, to keep my fingers loose. It's almost like just to keep it 
working, to keep them moving. It's almost like, like calisthenics or exercises before you work out. It pays huge dividends. I'll tell you something else that I do. Uh, you know, I'm from Chicago, O'Hare, if you've ever been through that United Terminal, and I've got those like bizarre LSD psychedelic lights. There's people movers. And, and what I mean about that is you can walk on, you know, obviously escalators up and down where you don't have to, you know, uh, uh, you know, people, you know, with luggage or something, you don't have to walk up or down. Okay, I get that. They also have ones that are just parallel to the ground, people movers. We just stand on it, that and it'll walk you literally, you know, I mean, a couple hundred meters. This thing is long, you know, six, seven hundred feet till the next staircase. I never take those. Never. I walk. It's weird, but I found this out. I read this crazy article that said, if you just avoid things that, that are like escalators and people movers and things, you can actually knock off five to six pounds a year uh, and it keeps you in better shape. And that would, you know, translate to like two to three uh, kilometers, uh, not kilometers, I'm sorry, uh, but it would translate to, uh, uh, it would translate to five or six different pounds so that you could keep it off. And I found I do little things like this all, all the time. And, and uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm talking about kilograms, of course. And, and so anyway, you know, people are like, okay, you're going to say the word, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, but it's two to three kilograms. And, and so uh, five to six pounds. And so what I do little things to keep myself in shape. Now, I want to uh, so I want to go over this. Now, as far as specific exercises, you're going to have to get that with speed kills. You're going to have to go to mentalmethod.com. Go to my YouTube page. I have so much content about exercises, but I wanted to impart to you, it's the world according to Mikey. When you pick, it's not that hard. You have to ask yourself just a few questions. Do I put my fingers on the guitar? Do I use a free-floating mechanism where I do not put my fingers on a guitar? Do I slant my pick downward or do I slant my pick upward? And then try the tremolo after you... I mean, look. Just that alone. Just that alone can give you an incredible amount of speed. Now, um, I know I said this. I am playing one of the MAB new signature guitars. We have Sawtooth is the greatest company. I, I've been in the music industry a long time. And if you know me and you know my career, I'm not a company hopper. When I change companies, there's a really good reason. I'm going to just tell you everybody here right now. There are three main companies that I work with that are all under the same umbrella. Sawtooth Guitars, that includes Sawtooth Amps, Chromacast Music Products, and then the retail outlet Godi PS Music. So that is two plus two is metal four minus metal one. Those are the three big companies. They are the best people that I've ever worked with. Now I've worked with a, of some great ones. And, and, and uh, you know, I always believe in my heart that it's a people business and, and that if, you know, the people that run companies, the people that work there are indicative of how the com company is going to perform. And I absolutely uh, love the people that I work with with Sawtooth. We have some incredible new signature guitars coming out. The first two, this is the STM24 in black, satin black. It is in the $250 price range. Sorry, I'm putting the guitar down and I'm grabbing the satin white one. This guitar is in the $450 price range. Now, if somebody goes to my page and says, No, dude, it's not $450, it's like $699. I'm going to tell you something else about the world according to Mikey. I do not like a few things, okay? I don't live like this. If I can't go to something, I never post online. I'm going like to a wedding today so I can't attend your event. See, I don't really care what you can't do. 
I care what you can do. And that's how I live my life. I don't think about what I can't. I think about what I can. This guitar, and the reason I'm saying this, is got an, a, a top-of-the-line German-made Floyd Rose. We're talking the best, hardest metal on planet Earth. This would be in, in a really expensive guitar. Well over five, ten thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, one thousand, and it's in the four fifty price range. If you want the upgrade, there are some upgrades to this guitar. It's six ninety nine. Okay, so uh, and, and again, I ask all of you too to do a little research. You know, uh, in you know, instead of saying you know why you can't do something or you know oh you know well like tell me where this is or can you you know why. Go to the website. Google it, baby. Do your own research. What do you think I did? Why do you think Speed Kills is so famous? I did the research. Nobody came to me and said, you know, Michael, we think you're like amazing. We're going to give you all the information you want. Nobody gave me nothing. Nothing. I went out and got lessons. I went out and taught myself after my guitar teacher couldn't teach me. Wikipedia, I'm just going to tell you right now. A lot of it's wrong. And, and and I've looked at other people on there. They're like some weird bias website now. I, I don't even get them anymore. They have a lot of stuff wrong about me. But one thing that I can tell you is right. When I was 13 years old, my guitar teacher said that I was too good. And that I couldn't, that he could not teach me anymore. And that was true. And, and I was on my own. But I'll tell you what I did. I made studies. I looked at the greatest guitar players that I felt were out there. The George Bensons, the Robert Fripps, the Aldi Miolas, the, the John McLaughlins. You know, I, I loved Alan Holdsworth a lot. I, I did, but I never related to how he could relate to the average person. The closest that ever came to Alan Holdsworth was Eddie Van Halen. When, when he did like the solo and beat it, that was so outside and amazing. I thought that's Alan Holdsworth in a in a more uh, commercial sense. And I knew Alan Holdsworth. I, I talked to him extensively. He even let us borrow, believe it or not, his drum kit on the first Nitro album. Bobby Rock was endorsed by Sonar, and those Sonar, sonar drums just sounded too, they didn't sound right in the studio. So so Alan Holdsworth, I, don't, I never even heard him play drums. He was in the next studio. He had a Yamaha kit. And we were talking to him. I was like, "Dude, man, you know, he's like, hey, I've got, you know, I've got this kit, mate, you know, because he's a British guy, and, and and we use this. So on OFR, when you hear freight train, it's Alan Holdsworth's drum set. So go figure. Uh, now, getting back to all this stuff with this guitar, uh, it's got the top of the line, Floyd. I also there a lot of the youngest players now whether you get gabriel guardian who's a really great guitarist keyboard he uses my string dampeners an old school thought is that oh no it's cheating well what's cheating about it uh, when you use a string dampener you can use you know fret wraps uh, most of the young players use either this or or another thing called a fret wrap i like these a lot better i think they work a lot better but the point is, is they use things to help them get a better, cleaner sound. And so the elitists, the purists, oh, I've studied jazz and jazz players never use that. Shut up already. I don't want to hear it. Uh, just do what makes the music sound cool. So when I, now do I not need this? Of course. Do I like it? Look at that. I'm just holding a note and putting it up and down. See, but when I do that, it blocks the strings, see? Versus this. And so what that means is that if I want to tap, hey Denny, how are you? If that, um, if that, if I want, if I just want to tap that. It really helps to stop extraneous string noise. This is a Chromacast product. Um, Chromacast, sawtooth guitar, sawtooth amps, and the retail side, GoDPS, 
are part of the same huge corporation. You know, one of the things that people said, now I was kind of hurt by this, you know, because nobody likes criticism, but they're like, oh, you left this other company, and oh, you're now with this big name company. They didn't realize something. Sawtooth is not big. They're really big. <laughs> and, and I'm not stupid. I'm a lot of things. I never said I was a role model. I never said nothing. But I'm not, one thing I'm not is stupid. And, and uh, I want to work, you know, the old owner of my former company said something. He goes, you know, I'm in a position in my life. He goes, I would rather hire an employee that is not as knowledgeable but is more passionate than, and he goes, I only want to work with people that I like. I'm at a stage in my career. I had lots of options. I've had lots of options my whole life. You know why? Because I work hard. I don't sit on my butt. Do you think in this you know, COVID thing that I sat around feeling sorry for myself? Because every show that I had in the United States got canceled. Every single one. Now, and I'm not a firm believer that it should have. Okay, and this is not political or conspiracy. I just think that, that um, we... A lot of, th some of this is in, that it's really dangerous. There's no question about it. But I also think that people are shamed into not wanting to tour right away because they don't want to be called out for, for not, uh, not being like uh, respectful to other people. There's a whole lot of issues involved in this. But the one thing I said is this, does that make it so that I'm sitting around going, I'm the press. No. What I did is I found ways I'm practicing more acoustic. I'm pulling out all these songbooks that I've accumulated over the years to learn new things. Always a student. See, because every disadvantage, every setback can be a major opportunity for you. And that's how I look at it. I said, okay, every, okay, so I've lost. I've lost a lot of money this year. But I'm fine. I'm not hurting. And, and because I work really hard and, and I'm building this up for the future, I like to help people. And, and the reason I'm saying this is because it's, it's kind of like guitar. I've analyzed this to the point where I've been paralysis. Uh, I was paralyzed by a note. I'm going to tell you something. I, there was a song that I wrote with the lead singer of the man, Holland, Got a Rut. It was a really great song. Like, <laughs> Gotta run, gotta run, gotta run. Well, when it came to the solo, I did this in the in my second solo album. I needed to go like this, and this first note, I couldn't get it to what my brain said in tune. I'm like, it ain't in tune. It ain't in tune with the track. I tried literally 10, 12 hours for one note. And finally I said, forget it. I just laid it down and forgot about it and didn't even put it on Planet Gemini. I did this really cool prog version of it. And I came back a couple months later. I didn't even notice it. And the reason, and the reason I'm saying this is in the Iron Maiden song. <laughs> Dickinson did the same thing. He couldn't sing the first line. He did it a million times because sometimes paralysis through analysis. But then he did it. It came out great. The rest is history. They're still huge. I'm still around. And so the point is this. Hands on. Hands off. Pick it down. Pick up. PPS. Potential picking speed. That's it. Focus your style on that. Now, I want to talk about a couple other things. Go to my YouTube page. You can see something that's really cool. We did uh, a thing called a shred collab. And, and uh, this girl named Kate Devon, she's only 19 years old. I actually met her and her boyfriend a couple years ago in upstate New York at a, at a guitar clinic uh, at a store called Big Apple Music. And I remember she came in there really bubbly and effervescent. And her boyfriend was like, you know, like he should have been cool and, you know, everything. It's just, you know, they're a really cute couple. 
Anyway, I got to meet her and, and I didn't think anything of it. Well, you know, social media, you know, everybody know e each other. We started talking on social media and she's very, uh, she's a go-getter. That's all I can say. You know, she's going to, you know, probably you're going to hear a lot more from her in the future. And this is where I'm getting to. There was a question I got that I didn't answer. And somebody was in panic mode. He was like, Michael, please help me. I don't know what to do. I want to make it in music. I don't have any connections. I don't have anybody I can talk to. I don't know what to do. Now, I was actually in that position uh, but in another situation about how to interpret a Paganini caprice. Because I asked myself, we don't know how Paganini actually recorded it. We don't have recordings. How do I do it? How do I do it? And I, I actually put it online. How do I do it? And somebody said, well, why don't you just listen? You know, listen to how other people did it. Hello? You know, do some research. In other words, get off your butt and do it. So here's where I'm using Kate as an example to answer the question. You want to know the simplest way to do something? Start. Start. When I have, over the years, you know, all the thousands of clinics I've done, I went to different music stores, and every once in a while, one of the music stores would have this amazing book collection. You know, we're talking song books, instructional books. So I'd pick up a book here, there, everywhere. i pick up these books, and all of a sudden, through the years, I've accumulated, you know, 50, 60, 70 different song books. But not just songs, you know, yeah, I, have the, I bought the Beatle anthology, but, you know, L.D. Miola book, Joe Pass. I, I mean, these incredible jazz books, you know, Flamingo Guitar Made Easy. How easy is it? And so just ask Paco de Lucia. Or de Lucia. Uh, so what I did was I've had the time now with this COVID thing to go over some of these books. And the point is this. Here's what Kate did. We did this amazing shred collab. It's on my YouTube site. She... She contacted me. She goes, Michael, I want to do the shred collab. Are you involved in it? And I told her straight out, I can't unless you get another name. She comes back to me. She goes, is Andy James a good name? I'm like, Andy James is one of the best younger guitar players on planet Earth. I know him personally. We're not really great friends, but he's great. He's fantastic. He's like Zach Wilde with amazing technique. I mean, he's ferocious on guitar. I said, did Andy really say he was going to do this? She said, yes. So what did I do? I contacted Andy. I said, bro, are you doing this? He goes, yeah, mate. And I said, okay. So then I talked to a really close friend of mine who I respect greatly, as a human, as a player, as what he's done, I contacted Vinnie Moore. I said, hey, Vinnie, I've got me and Andy and this young guitarist named Kate Davin, and I gave her, gave her information. I said, let's do a shred collab. And he's like, okay, so we released this. But when people ask, what do you do? Find a way to start. If you don't know anybody, here's what I do. Sometimes I'll write down what my strengths are. See, because Steve Vai said this great. He goes, you know, concentrate on what you're good at, not what you're bad at. You know, and, and meaning that, you know, like Steve Vai even said straight out, he couldn't play a double guitar like me. He can't play left-handed. So what he did was a brilliant thing. He tuned his guitar left-handed and just strummed it and then was able to play right-handed. He did a workaround. And he got, you know, that heart guitar is really famous. It actually helped me because he gave me credit for being, you know, the first to do it. But the point is that he found a way and he did it on his own. He started. See, that's what you have to do. You just have to start. Write down what you're good at. If you're not good with dealing with people then that's not, you know, that's a, that's a skill that's really important. You can be the smartest person on planet Earth, but if you can't think enough to pay your mortgage or pay your, your rent, you're going to be in trouble, you know. So you have to figure out what you're good at. Start at the beginning. Okay, you want to make it a music? Write songs. Do interpretations of songs. Release your music online. Start to connect with other people. Kate connected 
with Andy James, connected with me. I connected with Vinnie Moore. We had this amazing shred collab. And the thing that I really loved about it, it was it was not even at first like like situated as a shred a shred a shred, a shred collab. And uh, sorry, I was playing up. And uh, what I did is I told Kate, I said, arrange this so we have equal amounts of time between the two, uh, the three of us and four of us. And, and so what she did was really cool. We had three solo sections that were about equal for Andy, me, and Vinny, and then she played in between. Now I'm doing a new shred collab, a new one. This one's really cool too. I decided we want to do something completely different. And I think Kate's great, but you know, if you want to criticize, why is this young girl playing with you, Andy James and Vinnie Moore? Because she put it together. So when you have a question about what can you do, think about a girl like Kate. What can she do? She contacts the bad boys, and guess what? We said yes. And so here's uh, the next shred collab we're doing. Uh, there's a fairly big band by the name of Smashing Pumpkins. That happens to be from my hometown of Chicago. Jeff Schroeder, the guitarist from Smashing Pumpkins that has been in there for, you know, over, well over a decade, has agreed to play on this. So we have Jeff Schroeder from Smashing Pumpkins. We have Bill Hudson, who was in TSO, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, uh, Doro, and a lot of big bands. He is the other guitar player. And the third guitar player, Gus G, who happened to play with a fairly known person by the name of Ozzy. So the next Shred collab is going to be come out, coming out in either August or, or very early September because we're all busy. Gus G, Ozzy, Bill Hudson, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, Jeff Schroeder, Smashing Pumpkins, Michelangelo Badio, me. And so we're going to do the Four Amigos, and we are going to play something really special for you. Now, uh, the last thing I want to talk about, well, there's two things, is I have a Europe tour. Every single show in the United States has been postponed or canceled because of COVID. I can't, I have no control over this. The only thing I have control over is I'm, I'm actually in a weird way loving it because I'm being able to talk to you, I'm being able to play, and I can't stress enough. Go to my YouTube page. We have free lessons there. Go to mentalmethod.com. Uh, you can pick up my instructional programs. I mean, I love to play. I mean, just listen to this guitar, 450. <laughs> I'm backing up a little bit so you can see uh, my hands. But I just want to just riff out a little bit here. I'm using... That's just sitting around. Now, the last thing I want to do before we end, I want to Chromacast guitars, I mean, sorry, Chromacast music products, Sawtooth guitars, Sawtooth amps, Godi PS music. These are some of the best companies on planet Earth. Uh, they are so knowledgeable about the music gear. Uh, they are knowledgeable about playing. They are players. and. What we are doing is something that is a pretty amazing. The three main endorsees, myself on guitar, Rudy Sarzo on bass, uh, he's done pretty well. Ozzy, White Snake, Quiet Riot. He told me that lightning struck for him three times. That's metal two plus two is metal four minus metal one. So, I mean, can you imagine? Being an artist and starting in Quiet Riot, having the first metal number one album ever, which they did, 
And before that, he was an Aussie, okay, playing with Randy Rhodes. And after that, White Snake. What a career. And so he is the main bass player. Who is the main drummer? Vinny Apice. Uh, let's see, his first, one of his early gigs, John Lennon, not too bad, one of the Beatles. Ronnie James Steele, Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell. This drummer, Vinny, has played on some of the most iconic songs in the history of rock music. He's got such a great style. These are our main three. But then they, are, they signed a new band called Liliac. They're really young. We're talking like 18, 19 years old. We are not only using established artists. We are signing the next big thing, too. And it's just really refreshing to be with a company uh, like Sawtooth. And, and I love the guitars. I love I love the amps. I love Chromacast through my string dampeners. Uh, let me show you this. My guitar picks. You know, this pick, I've used jazz picks since I was a little boy. And, and this pick is made out of Delrin. So it's got a more metal sound, but it is small. And some people say, ah, oh, it's too small. It's like the, the size of a of a Jazz 3, it's not too small. The thing that's different about this one, it's it's a little, it's it's a 1.3 millimeter, but it feels lighter, even though it's so stiff than a Jazz 3, so the perception is that it's smaller. It's not smaller. This is a great shred guitar pick. It is a great rock guitar pick because you've got the accuracy, the really super, let's see if I can point this here, the super pointed, tip and this Delrin material is a little brighter sounding so you get a jazz accuracy that you can only get with smaller picks and you get a rock and metal sound I highly recommend to check these out now um, the last thing I wanted to let Joey talk but I think he's too agitated right now but we're gonna try okay hello everybody I'm Joey I just want to tell you this Michael is probably one of the most humble people I've ever known in my life, and I don't really know a lot of people, but he seems very humble to me. But I'm the one doing all the work. You think this, 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 this is Michael? No, it's me, and I'm tired of being second fiddle to you. Cool it, dude. See, Joey thinks he's a rock star. Yes, I am the rock star, but I'm doing all this, and all this, and all this. You're doing the interviews thinking that you're the guy, you're the man, you're the man, you're the man. I've given you a helping hand my whole life. See what I mean? This is why I can't tell Joey anything. So I can't, I can't discuss it. Listen, I'm going to start my own band. This is what I think. See, here's my goal. My goal is to play guitar and never retire. I want, you know, my grandfather was president of the FTD. We've had a flower shop in our, in my mom's side of the family for over 135 years, literally. My first cousin, Donnie, runs it. And uh, um, my grandfather never retired. And I asked my grandfather, I said, and he's in his 80s. I go, Grandpa, why don't you retire? And he had more than enough money. It's not money for him. And he goes, he goes, Mike, he goes, what would I do? My grandfather loved he was in it since he was five years old. Now, obviously, he passed away a long time ago. But that's who I feel about myself. You know, I mean, I want to play, uh, and my skills are still razor sharp. I want to play for as long as I can. And that's uh, something that can be inspiring for you. Listen, I was talking. No, this is more important. If you want to play guitar and you think you're too old, you're not. You can play guitar for your whole life. Eventually... This might happen. Listen, I'm the rock star here. I'm the guy doing this. You think all them arpeggios were you? They were me. See what I mean? I've got this. This is constantly talking about like, dude, shut up. No, I'm not going to shut up. It's my turn. I am the star of this show. You know what? I think I... No, okay, here's the thing. People have said Joey's naked. Now he wants to be a sock puppet. And he said to me, he wants to look like Vince Neal. Can you imagine? I got a sock that looks like Vince Neal. I can take an octave higher than Queen's Rye. He's going to be a madman, a total madman. But before I finish this, I don't want to retire unless I couldn't play anymore. But that's just not in the case here. You know why? Because I practice speed kills. I practice what I preach. You can play guitar at any age. 
and be great. That's the beauty of playing a musical instrument. We're using these muscles. I know, shut up. We're using small, they're called fast twitch muscles versus slow twitch muscles like your legs. So here's what I can tell you. If you get anything out of this lesson today, the world according to Mikey, paralysis through analysis. Listen to what I said. Reduce it to their main components. The important things. You know, and then people say, well, you use your elbows or your wrists. I use a combination of both. I got very lucky with the way I played because my wrist actually moves kind of up and down very naturally. A lot of people that play with their elbows, they have problems. If you have a problem playing the way you play, once you do advanced riffs and play, start to play fast, you know, in the shred zone, and I call the shred zone about 180 BPM on. That's playing 16th notes because, let's see, I'm going to take a guess, but like, that's about 180, 185, not too fast. And, and so um, when you can play that speed in eighth note, and I'm sorry, 16th notes, 180 BPM and higher, you're in the, what I call the shred zone. If you find you're having a problem, do a workaround. Remember, it's your body. You have to know your own body. So ask yourself, well, what if I move my wrist a little bit? What if I move my elbow a little bit? What if I do a few things to compensate for the pain? Remember, no pain, no gain. But you don't want to have a lot of pain when you're playing. See, I'm lucky after all these decades of playing, I just don't have pain because I do it right. I practice what I preach. So remember, sawtooth guitars, sawtooth amps, Chromacast music products, Go DPS music, the retail outlet, metalmethod.com. Remember, if the world says to you, you can't do this, do it. I'm Michelangelo Badio. See ya.